Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel if you're already a subscriber and welcome if you're new here. Please make sure that you have post notifications turned on if you want to be kept up to date with my uploads and leave a nice comment down below and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy it. Now, if you've been following me for a while or you've seen some of my, I think some of my first ever videos I uploaded to YouTube, you will probably know a bit of my journey as an entrepreneur. I've definitely had ups and downs and I think that's the same as everyone who's started a business. Um, so a lot of you watching this will be able to relate. Now, today's video is gonna be a little bit of a story time, a little bit different to what I normally speak about in terms of LinkedIn lead generation, SMMA, the hard business stuff. Today I wanted to speak about the biggest mistake that I've learned since being an entrepreneur. So at the start of this year, I was doing a lot of reflecting going into 2020, a lot of journaling, setting out my goals for the year. And there's a lot of things that I look back on and at the time they were probably, they seemed like impossible missions, impossible challenges and impossible hurdles to overcome. When I look back at them, I'm like, wow, like I'm so glad I had that lesson. And I think when you're in the middle of something, you can never look at it from an outside perspective. So if you're having a problem right now, like I know like when you have a business, there's always gonna be problems. I never used, I still struggle with it. I find like, I don't like stress and anxiety. Like I just want to avoid it and I normally overthink a lot of things so one of the things I've been working on in 2020 and it's actually going really well mainly due to meditation I think is when I when I'm faced with a problem I can now stay very level-headed about it so I don't panic I don't like freak out I don't feel like I need to like work myself up into like stress I'll just be like okay I'll stay calm this problem's here what can I do to fix it what's the solution instead of just focusing on what the problem actually is and kind of moving past something instead of holding on to it and that is one of the main things that meditation teaches you so in terms of this video today i wanted to speak about the main thing that i guess i the, the main mistake that I, I think i made when i started entrepreneurship and by mistake i don't think there are many mistakes that you can make because they're all lessons it depends how you look at it but the main thing that i guess i wish i had known before i started and how you can try and avoid it now, the first thing I wanted to mention is how glorified entrepreneurship can sometimes be. I think when I first started, I had no idea how tough it was going to be. And I've worked pretty much my entire life in normal like nine to five jobs, part time jobs, um, uh, jobs when I was like 16 years old, like still in school. And I think I've always worked super hard, but I didn't realize that entrepreneurship, how people speak about it is oh, you can work from your bed at home, like in your pajamas, you wake up whenever you wanna wake up, you can watch Netflix now and again, make a bit of money online to fuel your lifestyle and it's pretty like chill laid back, quite easy. There's so many of these online millionaires making all this money and you kind of just see it and you're like, oh, that looks great. Like I'd love to do that, why don't I do it? And you don't realize that when you actually get to it, you're probably gonna to have to put in more work than you would do for a nine to five, but it's just depending on how how much you value the rewards and how much you reap what you can build from entrepreneurship and putting in that front-loaded effort and hard work and dedication so i think i went into it a little bit blindfolded i think i had wool pulled over my eyes and i kind of went into it a little bit airy fairy with my head in the clouds being like oh this entrepreneurship thing is going to be fun and then it just like hits you like a ton of bricks and business really just it does just crush your ego and it gets rid of any sort of expectations that you have and it's just it just like basically punches in you in the face and it's like oh you thought it's gonna be easy i'm gonna show you otherwise but throughout going through these hard hurdles and, and challenges you're gonna come out the other side as a much better person now i think i just slightly touched on the second point i wanted to mention which is grit so grit is basically the tough part of your personality so being able to withstand pressures or challenges in life and move past it effectively and I've, I've kind of spoken about it a little bit already but I didn't have much grit in my personality I don't think like I, I did have grit but not I couldn't apply that kind of my personality to every different situation I was in so I think for me I mainly built up grit when I was doing door-to-door -door sales and I sometimes I, I look at my lifestyle now and I'm like wow like it's so easy to get lazy sometimes because I used to do like 70 hour work weeks, be up every morning, be fully commission based, sometimes lose money and be jumping over like, you know, the little in tube stations in London, you have the little like 
the gates. I don't know what to, don't know, I think I should know what they're called, but I don't know what they're called. The little barriers that you go through. And there were some days where I had to jump over the barriers because there wasn't enough money on my, on my card or my oyster to get through because I was just broke. So I had those days where I was working really long days and literally it was just like work and then I'd go to bed and I'd do it again. I'd work like six days a week. So I had that side of things and I'm so grateful that I did that because I learned so, 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 so much um, during my time working for that company. And I think I'm, I would never take it, take it back. And looking back at that, I think that definitely built up a lot of grit in my personality, but it's easy for your body to just switch and adapt to what it's now in. So as soon as you become more relaxed and like you make some money, you kind of chill and then it goes downhill again because you don't have accountability. You don't have a boss to be like, hey, did you like, are you in at 9 a.m. today? Or like, have you got this task done because you're the boss? So I think adjusting to that definitely took a little bit of time. Now, my biggest mistake, because I think otherwise this video is gonna be so, so long. My biggest mistake is taking things too personally. So. In terms of business, you can't you can't take things personally because it's business is like an interaction between two people. It's not it's not meant to be taken to heart. And referring back to MLM, sorry if you don't know what MLM is, it's multi level marketing. So I was I was doing business to business, door to door sales. So I'd go to different businesses, knock on the doors, and essentially I'm doing the same thing now with LinkedIn. It's just virtual, but I'd go and knock on these different businesses and pitch them direct debit for a charity that I was working with. So I do that and my director, the director of the company, he actually, he said to me one day, I think I was like, it was when I just started and he was like, you gotta think like, the, what's the worst thing that could happen if you go out today? Like what's the, what's the worst case scenario that's gonna happen if you go out today and you pitch a hundred people? And I was like, that they, don't sign up, like I don't make money, who's like, exactly like, the worst you're gonna get is a no. And it's a numbers game, it's the laws of average. So he, we used to speak to 150 people a day was like our target. And he would say, look, in 150 people, you've got three logical yeses. So out of those 150 people, I guarantee you, if you speak to 150, there are gonna be at least three people that it's a no brainer for them. They're just, they love the cause that you're pitching for. And they would sign up regardless if you just go and you're polite and you just run through a normal pitch, they're gonna say yes. So that was a laws of average, how many people you need to speak to to convert one into a customer. And I think getting rejected so much after one period of time, it, it upsets you at the start, it definitely wears you down, it takes it out of you. And I'm a sensitive person. I like to be friends with people. Um, I don't like, I don't, I don't have any enemies. Like I have like to be friends with everyone. So someone like not liking me, I would take that to heart and I'd be like, oh no, like what have I done to upset this person? Like what can I do to make it better? And when it comes to business, you've got to realize that they're not saying no to you as an individual. They're saying no to the product or service or how you've pitched it, unless you're, you've been horrible or mean or rude in some way, which hopefully you're not. But like I took things way too personally, I took it to heart. And then after I started going through the process of MLM and it was self-employment, like it was working for myself. Um, I went through the process of MLM. I got rejected by so many, probably thousands of people that said no to me. It really built up and it detached me and my emotions from the sale. And I think you, it's good to do that in certain aspects. Obviously you have to care about what you're doing. You have to care about your product or service. You have to believe in it hundred percent, but you need to detach from the negative side of things. If someone says no to you, they're not saying no to you as a human being. They probably would like you as a human being if you went for coffee with them, but they're just saying no to your offer currently. One of the things that has helped me reframe this in a positive way is being able to see challenges and any hurdles that come up and face me as curveballs, as something to learn and grow from. So in terms of actually dealing with the emotions, you've got to remember that all emotions are temporary and nothing is gonna stay with you for a long time. So any sort of pain that you feel in the moment, it's gonna feel so alive, it's gonna feel so vivid and so real to you, but you're not, if you if you fast forward a couple months from that point or even like a week or like a day from that point, that pain is not gonna feel as strong, it's gonna change. So your internal environment, which you're so insensitive to, you can easily just accept it, feel that emotion and then be like, okay, this sucks, but 
the highs are so worth it. And in entrepreneurship, you have really low lows and you have really high highs. So you might go through some sort of bad, turbulent month or quarter or even year or two years of your business. But you've got to remember that feeling when you close your first client or when you close a new client or when you get awesome results for a client. And it just feels so good, which is why entrepreneurship, even though it's, it can be a lot tougher in terms of on your mentality than a nine to five job, in, with some people depending on the situation, it's so worth it for, for the highs and the, the feeling that you get when things go well. Okay, so I guess the moral of this story is that there are some things that you can avoid, some things you can't, and some things that you can prepare yourself for and some things that you're just gonna have to go through and learn from and do it yourself on your own journey now. You might be watching this, you could be just starting out in your first few months of entrepreneurship or you might be making 10 times more money than me. Um, but I think the beauty of entrepreneurship is in the pain and the struggle as well as the highs that you get from, from those like amazing feelings when you accomplish something great. So that's kind of everything that I want to speak about. And if you are going through, I guess, a struggle or a hard time with business right now, trust me, it is temporary and it is gonna, you're gonna move past it. And I think the best thing you can do is learn how to see the problem from an outside perspective, be able to manage it and deal with it and not internalize it too much and to not take things personally when it comes to business interactions. So anyway, that's my little motivational speech over. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Let me know what you thought about this video down in the comments below because I personally really enjoy these conversational like story time kind of videos so if you like them too please let me know and I will see you in the next upload.